Hello everyone, I'm Elle. Welcome to another video by Vegan FTA. We'll be going through some articles today that can be found over on veganfta.com. If you're interested, sign up to our newsletter over there so you don't miss anything. And please make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon so you don't miss a thing over here either. Our first story is new study looks at excuses carnists use to justify eating meat. A new study by researchers from the University of Copenhagen, Denmark, has looked at excuses meat eaters use to justify their diet and found that although people are aware of the negative impact of eating meat, they still rationalize its consumption using very weak excuses based on false cliches. I'm sure if you're vegan, then you've come across this before. If you've talked to somebody who eats animals, that the cliches are used basically every single time. The participants of the study, mostly meat eaters between 23 and 63 years of age, were split into six focus groups with variations in education levels, gender, and geography. All six focus groups agreed that a key way for people to reduce their diet's climate impact is by eating less meat, but they came up with several justifications for not reducing their meat consumption. The study, titled Bad Avocados, Culinary Standards and Knowledgeable Knowledge, Culturally Appropriate Rejections of Meat Reduction, was published in April 2024 in Sage Journals. Its authors found a pattern of participants describing vegans as extremists and hypocrites for eating avocados and highly processed foods. I'm sure if you're vegan as well, you've come across these arguments and you've been accused of this yourself. Kia Ditlevson, co-author and associate professor from the Department of Food and Resource Economics said in a statement, there was a tendency for them to shame avocados as being climate unfriendly and scold vegans for being extremists. According to the authors, this imagined extreme vegan diet consisting of only highly processed plant-based foods and avocados enables non-vegans to deflect blame. The meat eaters in question tried to resolve their perception of having an environmentally unfriendly diet by problematizing vegan diets, suggesting that they might not be as good for the climate as they seem. Of course, you are probably catching the drift that by now this is very environment focused. And obviously we are vegan FTA, we are vegan for the animals. So even if it wasn't environmentally catastrophic to farm animals, it would still obviously be wrong to do so. And a lot of cliches are used in the conversation of ethics as well. If you're vegan, you're battling with so many angles. Lead author Thomas A.M. Skelly said in a statement, with this notion, the participants confirm to each other that their food practices are not more problematic than food practices among people who have cut out meat entirely, even though the truth is that red meat has a far greater climate footprint than both avocados and vegan products, and vegans do not necessarily eat more avocados or processed products than meat eaters. Yeah, that argument will be used even on vegans who don't consume these products. And with data demonstrating just how environmentally unfriendly animal products are, it's really weird to bring up avocados or processed foods. Let us know what cliches you've heard down below and what you're sick of. And just a moment to let you know that we actually have an AI responder tool to deal with those pesky anti-vegan cliches. If you've interacted with a non-vegan who's causing you some problems whereby they are saying the same argument that you've heard a thousand, three hundred million times, but you just really don't want to respond to it this time, don't worry, there is a responder tool where you can put in something like plants feel pain, for example, something that you will hear very commonly, and it will come up with an appropriate response in the tone that you would like it. This is definitely a tool to bookmark so that you can be efficient without having to put in too much effort over and over again over the same argument. With that bit of information, let's move on to the next story. Peter France disrupts pre-Olympics fashion show. On 23rd of June 2024, the France department of the animal rights group PETA lit up some of Paris's most iconic landmarks, projecting a sky-high message to expose the cruel practices of LVMH, a multinational holding company and conglomerate specializing in luxury goods, which is the top local sponsor of the Olympic Games in Paris this summer. This was done during the Olympics-themed Vogue World Fashion Show at the famous Place Vendome. The projection featured the message Louis Vuitton drop exotic skins. Peter's spoof Fridgy, a mascot of the Olympics, was featured in the projection. Footage of human slaughtering crocodiles was also projected at the Eiffel Tower and the Louis Vuitton Hotel, which is scheduled to open in 2026. 
On 9th of May, Peter's parody Olympic mascot sent another message to Marseille, calling out the cruel practices of LVMH by disrupting the Olympic torches journey with a message. The Olympics sponsored by cruelty to animals. Peter France's costumed activist disrupted the event in Marseille, brandishing a crocodile corpse in one hand and in the other, a bloody bag bearing the message, Louis Vuitton, stop using exotic skins. Rather honestly, we are in 2024 and people are still using the skins of animals. Why? LVMH was formed in 1987 through the merger of fashion house Louis Vuitton and Moet Hennessy, which was established following the 1971 merger between the champagne producer Moet and Chandon and the cognac producer Hennessy. According to Peter, the company claims to embody an exceptional spirit of innovation and is attempting to use the event to position itself as a modern leader, yet it continues to torture and kill animals for fashion accessories made of fur or exotic skins. A PETA Asia investigation into slaughterhouses in Indonesia that supply LVMH showed snakes being beaten with hammers, inflated with water, and cut with razors while they were likely still conscious. Really reaffirming the message that nothing humane ever happens in a slaughterhouse. Let us know what you think down below and do you want to see an end to using the skins of animals? Our final story is vegan activists demonstrate against the dairy industry in Malta. On 22nd of June 2024, vegan activists protested at the Triton Foundation of Valletta, Malta's capital city, in a performance art stunt against the dairy industry. Three activists from Animal Liberation Malta wore pumps attached to their breasts and held up placards with slogans including Dairy is scary, milk is not humane with E in brackets, and not your mother, not your milk. The activists performed the demonstration wearing chains, numbered ear tags, and fake blood smears. You may have seen this performance before, it's been done by speciesism.wtf and Radically Kind coming together to make this performance. They do it in quite popular places and it becomes quite an artistic stunt, really highlighting just how wrong dairy is and how weird it is too. In a statement, Animal Liberation Malta said, the entire dairy industry is based on the exploitation of the reproductive system. Milk consumption is in sharp decline globally. The dairy industry keeps growing by constantly pushing subsidized milk to be included in more and more products, even those that traditionally did not include any dairy. That's true. How many times have you picked a product up and you've seen milk in it and you're like, why is this in here? Humans are the only animals that continuously consume milk from other animals and continue to consume milk throughout their lives. Animal Liberation Malta highlights the fact that there is a compassionate, cruelty-free alternative to animal milk that is plant-based. Furthermore, plant-based milk is more environmentally friendly and natural to drink than milk from other species. Highlighting the main issue with milk, that it is indeed cruel. Mothers have their babies stolen from them, they are artificially inseminated, these babies are killed, these animals are mutilated and exploited and killed when they can no longer produce milk. There's so many ethical issues with it. This event was inspired by others who took place in the UK. On 21st of October 2023, Five women from the animal rights group Speciesism.wtf and Radically Kind staged a similar piece of performance art in front of the Tate Modern Museum of Contemporary Art in London, titled Dairy is Not Humane with the E in brackets. The event aimed to challenge the notion that animals are commodities and highlight the ethical implications of speciesism. The piece also depicted the chained women pretending to be milked by machines and then explaining to passers-by that they were artificially inseminated every year to meet the demand for milk. Samples of this humane milk, oat milk, were available for public to try during the demonstration. As always, let us know down below what you think of this story. And that concludes the end of our articles today. I hope that you found them intriguing. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. And don't forget to go vegan for the animals because they are who it means everything to.